what's up youtube you're looking at the new nikon coolpix l840 this part of nikon's this year's spring collection and this one is one of the mega zooms uh, have 38x of optical zoom with this nikon lens here we'll talk about those um well um, i mean uh, it's a good pocketable mega zoom camera as you can see it's mostly plastic all this part you also have a hint of rubbers here and there where you would uh, you know generally hold the camera to give you a better grip and you can see the lcd attracts a lot of fingerprints out here now uh, this guy has 16 megapixel of maximum still resolution it records full hd videos and has a relatively smaller but general in this price point 1 by 2.3 inch cmos sensor the nikkor lens here uh, goes from 22.5 till 855 mm in 35 mm equivalent uh, that's the actual um, you know according to the sensor size and then you have an aperture range of a pretty unusual 1 by 3 till 6.5 so you get 6.5 at 855 mm which is quite good a Nikkor ED and VR lens now VR is vibration reduction uh, that's Nikon's way of saying this lens has image stabilization feature. However, uh, you get the optical image stabilization only when you're shooting still. While you're shooting video, you get hybrid stabilization, meaning a mixture of optical and uh, electronic stabilization. Quick look at the button. And on the front side, you have big lens almost covering the whole front side. You also have a very deep, uh, you know, grip that's that's amazing that helps you grip the camera better and it actually helps you stabilize and shoot handheld even when uh, the zoom is let's say you know completely outstretched for example it goes here it's not much but on the low light if your hand is here and you have this great grip then it's going to stabilize the camera that whole lot more also has a um, big mechanical noise and then you have your um, autofocus assist lamp nothing much in here the lens on its body got a zoom lever as well so you can either use this or this one and stabilization kind of um, button there on the top you have the shutter release button and the zoom lever your some of the other buttons out there speaker and mic and that's the gps and eyelets for your lanyard your wi-fi uh, that's the Wi-Fi button actually not GPS sorry and then it also has uh, NFC on this side you have DC in AC out AV out and the HDMI port which is a micro HDMI does not have sound monitoring or for that matter external mic provisions that's the flash you cannot bounce it I mean you cannot yeah it just goes in one direction straight onto your face and then on the back side you have a three inch monitor it's not touch screen yeah it goes almost yeah, more than 90 degree actually the top so that you can look from the top camera here and then this one you know you cannot exactly take a selfie with this one this camera weighs 538 gram which is um well quite good actually i don't feel the weight much when you hold it in your hand and specifically thanks to this grip you do not feel the weight much you have your usual uh, buttons over here and then here another good thing this guy takes um, SD cards and then four double A size batteries so double A size batteries are available uh, everywhere you do not need a specific brand of battery specifically for your camera so that's good you can always always have you know spare batteries and they um, well they do not give you as much battery life as those other um, batteries that gen you generally get with the DSLRs but still because you have extra batteries you'll never um, you know run out of shots your tripod mount over there overall uh, I, I just find the camera a bit too plasticky but I think for this mega zoom um, Nikon wanted to you know, keep it more manageable more mobile and for that a plastic construction I think uh, was more feasible so it has an internal memory of 20 MB and we haven't put any SD card. So let's take a look at the menu. So there you go, 16 MB max and then a white balance and then you have continuous high and continuous low shoot. Um, 
in other modes it goes max of uh, 1600 but if you're in the p mode auto mode that is uh, it goes to 3200 and 6400 as well but not in others in others the max you get is, is 1600 auto focus modes and other stuff and then your movie options best is full hd 30p progressive i generally keep the movie autofocus mode in full time movie vr is on hybrid and there you go frame rate 30 or 25 depending on ntfs or pulse whichever you prefer and then your wi-fi and then some of the system settings out here okay that's your type yeah so that's about uh, the menu let's go and check out how this one looks the playback menu so you have quick retouch the lighting glamour retouch and those kind of stuff yeah and in general you can go and start your square so you uh the overall system is slightly on the slower side and this one still helps me from more This is you have to raise the flash to be able to use this. The auto, auto with red dry reduction, fill flash, and then slow sync. And then this way you can adjust your exposure compensation scale. This way, this way will come your self timer two and ten seconds. You cannot customize your self timing. Here you have a macro mode. Yeah. So overall, a very well laid out. A menu system and it's it's big fonts it's easy to navigate and very very user intuitive now let's talk about some performance we'll talk about the performance in two phases camera and the lenses first the camera so autofocus performance the autofocus is fine with subject to its contrasting backgrounds but below average otherwise on more often than enough shots the camera focused on the background leaving the subject in the front totally out of focus Colors, saturation and hue of the L840 delivers mostly accurate colors except for on a few occasions where it tends to oversaturate the red and pink ones. Of course, it does not shoot raw, so you'll have to deal with those. They are still adjustable uh, largely in post, though you can just uh, decrease the saturation or the vibrance a bit. The camera processes the JPEGs well till about ISO 800. ISO 1600 starts to see heavy noise but still uploadable to web. However, ISO 3200 and beyond just falls apart. Metering is one of the high points of the L840. The matrix metering system of Nikon makes very few mistakes even in stressed conditions. Here we did not stress the camera enough but still uh, the extreme contrasting exposures could have been challenged for many metering systems that take an average exposure of the whole. Something to cheer about here. Now talking about the lens, about the lens sharpness. The sharpness at the widest end with widest open aperture is relatively uniform across the frame with slight fuzziness towards the extreme left frame where you can see the grasses kind of slightly goes uh, you know, out of focus or fuzzy, not out of focus really, that's fuzzy. However, the scenario changes drastically at the telephoto end with widest open aperture less than 50% of the center area is sharp rest all almost fuzzy so remember if you're shooting something at the telephoto ends uh, especially make sure it's absolutely in the middle of the frame and does not cover too much of it uh, well the l840 is not much of a bokeh material because the apertures are not very large on either end however it uh, you know, I like the way the camera renders the out-of-focus areas. They are very seamlessly blended with the focused areas and does not show weird shapes in out-of-focus backgrounds. Distortion is another high mark area for the L840 where it shows very less distortion or we can say the camera must have processed the JPEGs well so as to see. 
there is almost no barrel distortion and even keystoning at the widest end. The telemost end shows very minimal pincushion distortion but I would uh, perfectly be okay with that. As far as chromatic aberration is concerned, again good job by the camera eliminating much of the possible chromatic aberration from the photos, even in high contrast areas, fringing is minimal. So then did you like the image and video samples of this one and the performance overall? We found uh, the good things are the images are of very good quality, uh, even the videos. They are not much fuzziness, the images are well slightly soft but I think they are perfectly perfectly fine for this size of a sensor. Uh, the main downsides I have are mostly in the feature of the hardware. Number one is this cap position. Now this one goes in here and not exactly on the lens mind you. So what happens is in case you forget to put you know take this off before pressing the power button it will give you an error. It will give you a lens error try again after turning the camera on or off. So basically the lens wants to come out and the lens cap is preventing it do you see otherwise it it would come out till this point by default whenever it's switched on now that's very scary because that might i just um, i mean um, i'm just scared that might spoil the motor of the lens so what i would have liked nikon to do is have a lens cap around here so even when you have the lens cap on, at least the motor is not spoiled. The lens could come out and still you have the lens cap on here. That's one thing. Go back. Yeah, number two thing is that this guy only shoots raw. That's expected at this price point. However, I, I, I think um, now even the mobile phones, uh, Android 5X versions have raw support. So I think all cameras now should have a raw support. I don't know if it's too much of an ask or if that involves a particular cost, um, but only JPEG is already processed file. These cameras are great optically, but um, you should be able to work on all the information that this camera captured. And JPEG is not all, all the information. It's a single layer file. It's only 8-bit. That's another thing. Uh, Apart from this, there's not much thing. It's it's very plasticky, but I think I would I would take that. Yeah. So overall, I like this camera, and at a price of only two fifty dollars or slightly above fifteen thousand, I think this camera makes a great case. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Ask anything related to this camera, and we'll try to answer them. And please subscribe to our channel and share this video to share the love. We'll also give some buying link in the video description. If you buy those through those link, uh, you do not pay anything extra, but we get a very small commission, often in a single digit numbers like 2%, 1%, 4%, like those. But that will actually help us get these devices uh, to review for you. So that would be really, really helpful. And that also keeps our channel and our website going. Thank you.